are not ready for assuming so amount of data, so amount of soft, uh, sophistication, okay? But I am optimist. And what I mean with that is, for sure, we are going to be a better future, a very prosperous future, thanks to all that stuff, for sure. But the price for that will be our privacy. And we, we see that every day. Because of our ignorance or because we are focused on other stuff, we are not paying enough attention, from my point of view, of course, paying attention on the scope of the privacy of our data. We are giving our private data without thinking so much on that. And IoT is just another way of giving our privacy without paying attention on that. All those surveillance cameras that we have installed around, all those sensors that control if we are parking in that parking lot or in another. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of sensors around us capturing our behaviors because of our well-being, because the security of everyone. Yes, it's going to be a better future, but less private future. And it's in our hands to change that. And the only way that we have for changing that is education. The lack of professionals is, is, is in our hands to change that, no? And for example, because of that, we are here today for talking about this master. Because IoT, it's those kind of new requirements of the market where education is not ready to, yet. No? Because it's a mix of knowledge from different disciplines that it's not available in most of universities, in most of schools, institutes, whatever. There is no education plans for that market requirements. And this is our challenge. It's how we can train, how we can educate those new profiles required by market. Those profiles which mix electronics with networking, with systems administrator, with data analytics, with it's a lot of different skills in one person. And don't forget about soft skills, which are maybe much more important than hard skills today. They read that 75% of the IoT projects fail. Is that true? I don't know, to be honest. A lot of them fail, yes, <laughs> I can ensure that. And usually they fail in the first phase or in the first part, which we call proof of concept. Most of the IoT projects start with a proof of concept, which tries to validate the hypothesis that Internet of Things could help in some way, whatever. Why they fail in that step? Usually because uh, they tried to validate only part of the story, not the complete story. So what we expect is that it makes sense in terms of business. And what we have to validate in the first phase, the, that proof of concept, is that IoT project makes sense in terms of business. If it makes sense in terms of business, later will come technology and will come the technology challenges. But the technology challenges are not the first thing that we have to validate. So the usually proof of concepts are focused on validating that there is a technical solution for whatever. And this is not has to be the first thing to validate. The first thing to validate is, does it make sense for life? Does it make sense for business? Does it make sense for the user? The biggest challenge that we have to face in a in a day-to-day -day business, it's not about technology, it's about people. It's about how to align interest, how to align mindsets. Yeah? <laughs> so this is the biggest challenge that you can face in any project. Doesn't matter if it's about IoT or whatever in life, I think. In my case, I remember it was a, a quite big company, 42, 42 factories around Europe. I don't remember exactly how, how many people were were in those factories, but in the project were about 200 people. And I remember we spent 
about a year, just in a meeting after a meeting, okay? Just trying to align mindsets. <laughs> and after a year of that effort, I remember that we are far from, from finishing and I was completely desperate. I didn't know how to evolve from that point because, yeah, imagine 42 factories in different countries in Europe means completely different cultural approaches about the ways of doing things. And I remember Q&A endless meetings about everything, everything. So what's the biggest challenge? Align mindsets, align people. Those soft skills are the key for the success at the end. I remember all my life uh, like a, we say a formal student, okay, like going to school later in the institute and finally to the university. Always I had a kind of fight between the education plan and what I understood that I had to learn that stage of my education. No? And finally, I have the opportunity <laughs> to say what I think that people have to know for developing that occupation or those positions. And it's by far very, very different from other programs that you can find around. Because usually those programs are not created or delivered with people that lift of doing that profession. Usually they are academic people or they are, I don't know, cathedratics or doctors, no, PhDs, say, yeah, nice. It's very good knowledge to take into account, but this is not experience. In our master, what we try to bring to the students is that way of thinking, is to understand which are the key aspects of a technology that you have to control you, that you have to understand for applying that to your solution. It doesn't matter if you don't know how to develop that to the detail. There are experts that for sure can do that better than you, but it doesn't mean that you cannot create a proof of concept end to end. Okay, you have to have the skills for at least presenting uh, a prototype of what you want to get. Maybe your prototype is going to be so big to be commercialized. Yes, but at least demonstrates that your solution is real, is viable, okay? It's not, it's feasible. It's not anything that you just dreamed.